why am I anchored here? Why do I live here? Like, what is it about the coast and Oregon and the Pacific Northwest in general that I love so much? And every time somebody asks me that question, the first image that pops into my head is just like being alone in the woods. You can really find a lot of solace up here and especially a lot of solace in nature. It just feels so good to be by yourself in an old growth forest or on a beach in the summertime that has like 300 people, but in the middle of winter, there's just you and it's pouring down rain. I have so many different inspirations for photography. I'm so passionate about big landscapes. I am absolutely in love with portraiture. And then I grew up as a kid with a passion for winter. I was all about snowboarding. No matter what other activity was going on, it was all about being on the hill and just waiting for winter, man. It could not come soon enough. And so when my whole passion kind of shifted from snowboarding to surfing, the passion for winter never left. And so to think about these places that have snow and perfect waves, that's just the dream. You know, that's the dream for me is perfect waves because I'm passionate about surfing and snow because I just love the winter. Growing up in Bend, Oregon inspired my work in the early years. And then as my career progressed, I got to go on these trips and travel the world and see all these different cultures and experience all these different things. But those experiences keep reminding me of how blessed and special it was to grow up in such a unique location. Having the opportunity to come back and shoot the places and the people of Oregon is really great for my work because it brings it all back full circle to the things that originally inspired me. And for this trip, I was really just excited to meet local Oregonians and see why they're as passionate about Oregon as I am. On a clear day in the winter in Portland, Mount Hood almost sits on top of the city as a reminder that we have this insane connection to nature and we can get to it at the drop of a hat. It should just be like a ring of stars around the top of that right now. So the first stop on this trip is gonna be Mount Hood Meadows, and I'm gonna be meeting up with ski patroller Christy Beavert and her avalanche dog, Lily. Hey, Christy. Yeah. Mark. Mark, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, for sure. Miss Lily? This is Lily. Right on. I love it here. It's in my blood. I think a lot of people, myself included, try to leave and check out the rest of the world, and I think a lot of us come right back home. I've tried to sum it up to people before, and it's hard. People drive slow here. You know, it's just, it's just a little bit more of a laid back and slower culture than what you find in the rest of the world. Between Timberline and Ski Bowl and like uh -huh. everything else around here, like what keeps you at Meadows? Like what is it about Meadows specifically that you really enjoy? It's the people. Yeah? Yeah, just happy folks. That's so cool. And then the, the terrain at Meadows is pretty awesome. There's a lot of cool access from here. And yeah, lots of good features too. Yeah. yeah. Christy's job is so unique because she gets to work with the dog. She gets to work with Lily. And she gets to train Lily on how to save somebody if they're buried in snow. I mean, it's admirable and awesome and it's really cool. She's a pretty amazing dog. She's the kind that snuggles up and hangs out when, when you're mellow, and when it's time to start digging for a hole, she's like on it. Timberline is right next door to Mount Hood Meadows. As a kid, I would see so much footage from Timberline 
but I never really got a chance to ride it. So I'm super pumped to check it out. And it looks like we're gonna have a lot of fun up here today. Hi. How's it going? Good. Mark. Libby, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, thanks for having me. Yeah, glad you're here. My name's Libby Korok and I'm the assistant director of Ski Patrol at Timberline Lodge. I would say I choose to stay in Oregon to ski just because we have a very different mountain system. Not many places can you say that you're skiing on a volcano. We get to ski nearly nine months out of the year. So we transition into summer skiing and race camps and freestyle camps. This winter we've had 125% snowpack. So while that's awesome for our rivers, it's great for skiing. I think we're currently at like 181 inch base, which is absolutely perfect. So we've been pretty spoiled. Man, riding up at Timberline lived up to the hype, especially that flow park. It like really kind of blurred the lines between snowboarding and surfing. It was, I don't know, it was almost like surfing a perfect wave over and over all day. So fun. Just being here today and taking the runs we took and just ripping through the park and stuff, I was like, man, I should have done this way sooner. <laughs> yeah, at least it's not going anywhere. Exactly. So my next stop is my hometown of Bend, Oregon, and we're heading there a day early to meet up with Alex Lopez, who's a professional snowboarder there in town, and is actually the son of Jerry Lopez, who's one of the most legendary surfers of all time. And Alex is starting to shape surfboards now in his dad's shaping bay, and it's kind of ironic because I was able to shoot Jerry there a couple years ago, and now Alex is literally shuffling around in his dad's footsteps. You know, snowboarding, you know, it came from surfing. So it's just cool to see how that's playing out in the Lopez's life and I'm just super stoked to check it out. Hey guys. Hey, dude, how's it going? going? Mark. Right on, Alex. Nice, nice to meet you, you Mark. I think anywhere you grow up, you just want to get out of. Like, I want to go to a big city. You know, Bend is small and I don't want to live here anymore. You know, whatever thoughts you have, but I think it took traveling and going to other places and realizing like, oh, the grass isn't greener everywhere else. There's tons of activities. It, whatever you would want to do, you can pretty much do. The mountain is the biggest draw for us, for sure. If the mountain wasn't here, we would probably live at another mountain. <laughs> it's funny, you know, it took leaving Bend and leaving Mount Bachelor and falling in love with surfing to make me realize how surfy this mountain is. You know, Oregon has strong winds and the winds whip the snow up into these snow shapes that look just like waves and all over the mountain I've named them after waves that I've surfed and, and enjoyed, you know, throughout my surfing career. I think that's the reason that I love Mount Bachelor so much is because it's a surfing mountain. In the surfing world, Jerry's known as Mr. Pipeline. You know, he's <laughs> named after the wave that all other waves are measured by. So he kind of had everything at his fingertips in Hawaii, but then he moves to Oregon and raised his family here. So. It's kind of a testament to how special this place really is. Well, you know, people have always asked me, don't you miss Hawaii? And I don't. It was Mount Bachelor that brought us here. We've been here ever since. That was 25 years ago. The Oregonians are just genuinely friendly people. This is really a, a great place to be. No matter what happens here in Oregon, we're kind of here to stay. You know, they say the home is where the heart is, but sometimes you don't really understand that or appreciate that until you leave and go do other things and have these experiences in the world. And my photography has done that for me. It's taken me all over and I've had all these crazy experiences, but then to come home 
and see home and see Oregon and see Bend with fresh eyes, it's just mind blowing how lucky I was to grow up in such a special place. And sometimes it can just take a trip like this, you know, where you're reconnecting with the people and the places and the things that shaped who you are to remind you of where you truly belong. <laughs>